You know, it's been studied for quite some time, first through photographs and then through video, of how longer hitters in golf tend to look like they're retaining a ton of wrist angle as they come down in the downswing into the ball. They seem to hold it and then release it right at the last second. And that seems to go together with higher club head speed. So you know you want more of this. <laughs> right after this, let's talk about the do's and don'ts of creating more lag in your swing so that you can get the ball out there farther. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit it longer and straighter off the tee, longer and straighter all the way to the green because that's what makes golf more fun for me. Hey, if you agree, then please consider hitting the subscribe button, liking this video if you liked it at the end, and leaving a comment down below. Start a discussion. Hey, and don't forget to pick up my free distance ebook pictured up here in the corner of the screen. It's called 50 Tips for Hitting Your Longest Drives Ever. And I've left a link in the description below. You just have to click on that. It's an instant download. And I'm sure out of those 50 tips that two or three are gonna be things that are gonna help you get your drives a little further down the fairway. Okay, so today we're talking about lag and how to create more of it because we know that the more lag you have, the farther you're going to hit the ball, right? So, I mean, look at all the long hitters over the years. I mean, look at, here's a video of Jamie Sedlowski, the two-time, maybe one of the all-time greatest world-long drive hitters, you know, could reach 150 miles an hour, and you can see how radical his wrist angles are as he comes down into the ball. It's pretty crazy how bendy his wrists are, and of course, it is helping, but if you were to just go on and try by instinct to create this look in your swing, you're probably gonna be going about it all wrong. So let me try to help you with some ideas and a couple of really cool drills that I think are gonna add more lag and speed to your swing, but do it the right way. So you get it long and straight as well. All right, so I'm listing the aid of this really cool training device called the Speed Whoosh. You might have seen it on TV before. In fact, Jamie Sedlowski was the big, um, he was the big uh, celebrity endorsement for this product back when they were doing infomercials uh, several years ago. What I really like about this tool is what a loud swoosh it creates and how easy it is so that you can really tell when you're ramping up the club head speed and where you're reaching your fastest speed. So let's talk first about how not to create lag. Lag is not created by delaying the wrist action, at least the force, the attempt, the stimulus. In fact, the stimulus or the force that causes the club to start to uncock is actually way back here. If I didn't do any other body movements, it would look something like this, something like that. So you'd think that's the greatest cast in history. You're throwing your angle away too soon. So you might think instead, well, Steve, you're supposed to be holding the wrists deep into the swing and then magically releasing them really fast and catching up at the very end. Now, if you went about it that way, I think what you're gonna find is you're gonna dig yourself into a really deep hole trying to chase a look that you see in a photograph. You need to know what is really going on in that swing. What's going to probably happen if you do attempt to delay the uncocking of the wrist consciously in chasing this look on the way down that long hitters have, I think what you're going to find is that you're going to slice it a lot, you're going to shank your irons, you're going to heal it a lot. It's going to be really hard for you to get the club face squared up without really flipping the hell out of it at the very bottom, which is gonna give you the two-way miss. So that's definitely not the way to go about it. Looking at a photograph or a still image of a video and seeing this super tight wrist angle, like we're seeing in these videos like that, it's done a completely different way. Instead, it's going to be done by an extreme shifting in, of the weight and turning of the chest that you might not have 
if you're losing the angle too early. See, I'm still trying to throw from back here, but as you'll see in this demonstration, I'm gonna get the swoosh way out in front of me by shifting and turning. So I like to do this first with a lot of my students. I do what's called the baseball drill. And what I do is I tell them I'm going to throw them like a softball underhand pitch that would land, come down about in front of them like here, and it's gonna land on the ground right here. So they need to catch that thing right about here, way out in front, and they need to pull it around to left field. So let's take a look at what that might look like. I'll start with narrow feet. As I draw the club back, I'm gonna step like I would do in baseball and really plant my weight down into the front foot. In order to get the swoosh out in front, I'm gonna to have to turn my chest a lot if I'm gonna get the swoosh out here in front. So here is a fairly quick version. Okay, and let's do one more. So you could clearly see and hear the swoosh. We'll even do a, a slow-mo treatment here so you can see where the absolute fastest uh, swing speed was. I, was, I would make contact with that imaginary softball and really knock the heck out of it over the fence in left field. Um, however, I am throwing away the angle here. So if I didn't move my body at all, this is what exactly what it would look like. swoosh back here somewhere and we see it in slow-mo that you are you would be throwing away the angle too soon so it is a combination to create lag what you will need more of is this and putting your speed out in front of the ball trying to get your fastest point of your swing way out in front of the ball and around to the left now you won't have time to delay if you do this and you attempted to consciously delay as well then you're going to hit it like this every time the club will never have a chance to square up if you try to do both and you would hit the ball like this every time and you'd hit it sideways to the right and hit it off the heel a lot now once i've done that big I'll drill with someone, we'll film it, and I'll show them just amazingly how much lag all of a sudden they will have. You will too if you do this exercise, just simply by having the intent on putting the swoosh out in front. You will automatically, I see it in almost every student I've ever tried this with, all of a sudden when they put their intention out here, all of a sudden their wrists look like this into the ball and they generate a ton more speed when they get uh, allow the club to freely whip through so as we progress because swinging this funny stick at baseball height is not similar enough to actually hitting a drive so we work from farther away to more and more specific this way in the second drill I'll bow down just an, uh, above the ground like I'm hitting an ankle high fastball I'll tell somebody and on this one we're also going to take the step away the actual physical step we're going to take that away and instead you're going to just going to feel a step down step down just like you would if you were actually stepping but you're not going to move your foot so ankle level no step repeat and again i am picturing that baseball or that softball coming in on the trajectory and it's going to come down. I want to strike it right out here in front of me with my bat going around to the left more. This is ankle level. And I get the swoosh way out there. Now, Again, we slow that down. You see there's just a 
ridiculous amount of lag in that last swing. It looks crazy. And the club, this uh, white ball was probably moving somewhere in the neighborhood of, oh, say 150 miles an hour. So a lot of club head speed with this bendy shaft, nice loud whip. Oh, by the way, if you would like one of these, especially if you're in the U U United States, um, these are available on my website. They're fantastic tools for creating lag, um, helping you with your um, speed training program, and lots of other drills that I've been showing on this channel. So pick one up of these. I'll even leave a link in the description over to my website so it's easier for you to order one. Okay, next, next step is to move to your driver now. Step three, and you're going to attempt to duplicate the feel and the look of what you just did with the whippy stick. So here I'm just gonna take my normal stance. And again, it's the intention of swooshing the club loudly way over here to my left out in space like I'm hitting a pitch. This time the pitch is gonna be down all around knee or ankle level. So let's give it a try. Okay, so again, the difference here is it's not in the delaying consciously of the uncocking of the wrists. Right from the word go, right from here, I am starting to push on the club. I'm starting to apply force to the grip this way to cause it to rotate around the handle. That way, the shaft rotates around the handle from the force that I'm pushing outwards with my thumbs on that shaft like this. The only reason it does not come out to be a throwaway is because simultaneously I'm stepping and turning in order to focus my energy and my strike right there. So it simply becomes an energy, an intent to throw the club at high speed and where you would like it to swoosh. That'll cause you not only to throw it at the right time, but also to turn your body much more and shift your weight much more than you probably do. Okay, so the last step, once you've done those three sets of five or six dry swings, just to get the feeling, and maybe you videotaped yourself and you've confirmed, my goodness, that certainly looks different on video than what I normally see. I'm not throwing the angle away anymore. It looks like I'm really sustaining lag like all the big hitters I see on TV. The next thing to do is then to hit a few golf balls with the same intention, putting your swoosh way out in front. Let me give it a shot. is that the stimulus has to start here. It's been proven in many studies now. It's here, but by turning and shifting this way and focusing on putting the swoosh out here, essentially you're kind of doing an, an over-exaggerating exercise so that you can really feel holding the lag and releasing it out there. So hey, I, I really hope that you'll try this the exercise at home. Try it the next time you're on the range of intentionally putting your swoosh way out in front and making it loud, really whipping that club freely. Film yourself maybe, but whatever happens, would you please, if you get a, a, a different result, would you please come back and leave a comment down below and uh, update, uh, update us on your progress. Hey, I know you have a lot of choices in watching YouTube golf instructions. So, hey, thanks a lot for uh, choosing my channel. As usual, thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moorpark, California for hosting us today. And hey, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take care. <laughs>